Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is a part 2 video of our series of Copilot declarative agents. So in part 1 we saw how we build declarative agent without any code and this was that video like where we created a simple basic agent. That basic agent we built with the MS Teams toolkit and today we are going to extend it with a declarative agent with API or custom action plugins. So let's start with that. So we'll start with creating a new project into Visual Studio Code and we are going to take help of Teams Toolkit as we installed in our last video. And post installation you can see like if you go to this Teams Toolkit tab, you will find create a new app, view samples, add action and add capability, all those options. And in the life cycle we can provision and we can publish it to organization as well. So we'll start, we'll take a look at like building out with the new API and as well as we will take a look how to create a declarative agent with existing API. So right now to start with, I'll just click on this create new app declarative agent. So last time we took this no action and now we are going to click on this add an action. So we get three options start with new API. Start with open API description document, which means like you have existing API and you want just want to integrate that existing API into your declarative agent. And third is import from existing action. If you have already built some action, then you can import. So to start with, we are going to just click on this start with new API and that will create a new API from Azure functions. So when I click on it, I can define the authentication type. So if you are going to use the API key, then you can define OAuth based on your requirement, you can set, it, set that up. So for demo, we are just going to choose none and the language we are going to use as TypeScript. And we'll be just browsing it to one of the folder as create a new folder. So I'll just say repair new agent and we'll just select it and give it a application name so application name is repairs so as soon as you hit enter you will see like the default provisioning will happen the scaffolding of the application would happen and we'll get a application new application created and open for us so over here to start with if i just simply open this source you will find inside function i have this repairs t has created so this is our api endpoint and which is nothing but azure function which will execute the azure function so the function name is repairs and the request context invocation context and if i scroll down you will see like what parameters does this api endpoint takes so it's nothing but one get call and which gives us this repairs and because this is a sample so we have this repairs data JSON and we have this uh, the static JSON, the array which is being used into this uh, repair.ts. If I scroll up, we are just importing that repair data JSON into repairs record. And everything, the endpoint will execute, will use this record set and based on who is assigned to, because this is just a sample one. So based on who is assigned to, it will return the repairs records. So this is just API which is being newly built. I'll just collapse this and we'll just go to our app package. And now we are going to uh, walk through like what this app package contains. So as I said, like initially the first file is manifest JSON. So it contains the name about your agent and the description and the icon and everything or the permission you would like look for your agent. And the other main file is repair declarative agent JSON, which is the main file for your declarative agent. And here in our last video, we had this convolution starters plus the capabilities and the initial capabilities which we use without no code was just searching our sub web, searching into our people and SharePoint, that sort of capabilities we use. So in this one, we don't have any capabilities. We can include though, like we you want your agent to Along with this custom action, they can, I mean, browse to the search, then you can include those capabilities. But our focus is on actions. So this action is referring to our AI plugin.json. And this file is over here. And this is nothing but like it has the description about our API calls. So the namespace, 
is again like the name of our application name for human you can include that and this function this is the main part where it is going to our this the newly created api which is azure functions and it will decide like it will give it a name capabilities response semantics so all these are details which is required to make a call to our newly created api so runtime it will open api authentication is none and the specification url is repair.yaml and if i open this yaml file so this is the schema file or the template file which is used to actually make a call to understand like what declarative agent uh, endpoint we are going to call open source api being created with a swagger documentation if you see like any api you can create this swagger documentation which is a standard template open api version open api version info then server you are call and the path path plus like the type of call and the response expected the content and the input expected so this is standard yaml file and which we are going to like because this is automatically created for us because we just uh, created a sample zero function for us so once we are going to like leverage the any existing uh, apis then we are going to create this yaml file by ourselves but as I, as I said, like it's based on open API standard swagger documentation, we can simply build it. And adaptive cards, so you will see like these adaptive cards are created automatically. So this is a card which is being served like when we run this, like the response would be served in this format. The items, the type, and the image block. And this is repaired data json like this is a sample json which is being included so this is the simple one if you just wish to like create your own one then you can just start modifying this repair ts have your logic in place and once you have your logic in place then you can simply run this or in a debug mode to uh, to just check like what uh, how your api is working with the creative agent and then you can later on publish using this teams toolkit so right now i'll just run that into debug mode i'll choose debug copilot in chrome and you need to sign in so it's doing all the building operation build teams application validates package update package and then exhibiting life cycle for it I can sign in. all right so it ran into debug mode and it gave us a conversion starter i'll click on it and enter so it will ask that it want to access our API, the Azure function endpoint. So I'll connect to repairs local to process your return a list of details with the image, data to be shared with repairs local and always allow. Now we are expecting to get the data of repairs and this data is being served. So you see like all the records being served and we have this images as well and this data the format specification as i showed you like is based on the adaptive card the adaptive json which was created for this sort of responses so if we wish to modify or create your own uh, azure function api endpoints then you can just modify or uh, this given file the ts typescript file and then can build out your own now the second one so i'll just stop it and we'll just start creating the agent from one of the existing api so that could be like uh, your enterprise level apis for example you have your apis uh, let's say to create leave or to get the leave balance for employee then you can have integrated that with a declarative agent and in a conversational way the employee can get their leave balance out of that declarative agent and we can have this like uh, integrated with n number of any number of apis you wish to have and for for a for a demo purpose i would be taking the example of public api of weather so that api i am going to integrate so that because right now i don't have any local or enterprise level api for my organization which i wish would like to show you so i'm just going to just use the new the public api of weather so i'll just start creating a new app as i said like in the previous steps declarative agent and add an action and this time i am going to use start with an open api description document so once you click it this basic structure or the template for any open api you can create by yourself so i have created i'll show you one of the structure which i've created this weather api open api structure or the schema i've created i'll open this with 
we have studio code itself so that you can just have a look on it so it says open api weather api get current weather based on latitude and longitude and get current weather by coordinates it takes the name of latitude or longitude or you can just simply type in the name of any city or the location as well and in the response it will give you the entire weather details the temperature wind speed humidity everything so this is response so i'll use this one so i'll browse through that location with where i put this weather api and once i do that it fetches this all the endpoints which is being mentioned into open api document and that is just one get call so i can use it i'll just say okay and i can browse to a new folder where i'll just build this new weather agent weather new agent and i'll select that folder and i'll give it a name as weather agent my weather agent let's say and i entered that now i will get my all the scaffolding and the files created based on this new open api document or the open open api schema so we can go to a package api specification file and once i open this you can see this is a file which we actually browse through the endpoint is this the open.meteo.com and we have this get call and if i just go click on this declarative agent json which we did as last time so it will say that api ai.plugin.json is being used for actions and you can just go through this ai plugin json and this shows this says that what function we are going to use the namespace is my weather agent the function is get forecast and it on the current weather of a given latitude and longitude and it takes the again the input as the longitude and latitude and and the static file is the json the adaptive card json file to so get forecast.json so we can just expand this this created by us uh, by default based on the response with what we are expecting out of our api so it created a body so the body is having the type as text blocks text latitude and the latitude being served from the variables which we got as part of response again and this forecast data json is a sample data it put into this one so now we have just integrated one of our open api existing api that is for get weather or get weather forecast and we are good so now as last time we debugged it this time we can just simply provision let's say if i don't need to debug it then i can simply provision and i would able to see it as added to my copilot as studio as a declarative agent and i can add them into any of my application whether it's steam or directly into uh, copilot so it's successful and i will directly go to my copilot and will load this so that i can see this new api of weather agent to be available for me so i got this new api my weather agent clicking on it get current weather by coordinates or you can just type in give me temperature of london so it will say it will it want to access the api and will be just saying allow once or allow always so we say all always and now we are expecting a data call from our endpoint of api meteo.com and this is the format that adaptive card json format which i showed you it shows the latitude longitude current weather and wind speed and wind direction everything whatever we were expecting out of our api response we are getting that as part of this response so just now we successfully integrated our existing open meteo.com api into our declarative agent so the same way whatever api your organization has you wish to build you can integrate using this open api specification file you can include that it will in turn generate the respective plugin json for you and as well as the data adaptive card json and you can just keep modifying or you modify based on your branding of your company organization and you are very good to go so we were able to build this custom declarative agent with actions with custom plugins in just within 15 minutes 
And that was the intent of video. If you have any questions, then please do drop your comments. I'll try to answer. So that is it. Thank you.